OK, with our complex numbers, we can also think about what they mean geometrically, what they look like. And to do this, we need the Argan diagram. So consider your complex numbers. Whereabouts on a number line would you place them? So for example, something like um, 3 plus 2i. Where would you mark it on a number line? You might think that perhaps it goes here, between the 3 and the 4. But if you're going to put it in between 3 and 4, where exactly are you going to put it? Is it more than 3.5 or less than 3.5? Where exactly does it go in that order of things? It doesn't actually fit on that line at all. It doesn't quite work because we've got that imaginary part that we just can't compare to the real part. So what we do is we set up a plane. And this is called the complex plane or the Argan diagram. And we compare our real part and our imaginary parts um, to give us this. So we set our real part is 3 and our imaginary part was 2i. So um, plotting where that number goes on the Argan diagram, you just use them like coordinates. Okay, so we can also think about it as a vector. So this would be um, the point that is uh, 3 away in the real direction and 2 away in the imaginary direction. And we can do things like um, do the conjugate, so that would be the reflection in the x-axis, since it just reverses the sign of the imaginary part. We could have something like minus 2 plus i, that would end up over here. And then if you think back to your addition stuff that you were doing, before you would compare the real and the imaginary parts, you'd get an answer like this. You can also think about it in terms of vectors. So if you do 3 plus 2i followed by minus 2 plus i, the same vector, would look like this, and it gets you that same result of 1 plus 3i. OK, the modulus, if z equals x plus i, y, the modulus of z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now the modulus simply means the the length of that vector that we were talking about. So you can see quite easily from Pythagoras that you're just going to do the real part squared and the imaginary part squared, add them together and square root them. Uh, now loci, this is um, sets of points. Um, easiest to show you with some examples. So we're going to draw the set of points for which the modulus of z equals 5. So think about our Argand diagram. We want all of the possible z's that have a length of 5. So we could have this one, or it could be over here, or it could be over here. But you'll soon see the picture. Whatever we draw, it can be anywhere on that circle that's radius 5, because the, the length of the vector would then be 5. So the locus of all the points that have a modulus of z equals 5 is that circle with radius 5 centred at the origin. OK, second example. What about this one? Drawing the locus of z minus 5 plus 3i um, modulus is equal to 4. So what's this saying? It looks like this. z minus this complex number of 5 minus 3i so put that into brackets as a separate number by itself, is equal to 4. So the distance between z and this number 5 minus 3i will always be 4. OK, so now plotting what this looks like. Here's our number 5 minus 3i. We want all of the points that are a distance of 4 away from it. So that will be this circle here. And you can mark off some useful parts, so the left-hand edge of that circle will be at 1 since the radius of 4, the top part of it will be at i since the radius is 4. Now what if you were asked to, instead of saying where well, it's equal to 4, you do less than or equal to 4? You would shade in all of the inside of that circle. Now if it was strictly less than, think back to your loci work that you did back in year 11. Um, if it's up to but not including the 4, that circle would be dotted. OK, how about drawing the set of the points z for which z plus 3 minus 2i modulus is less than or equal to the modulus of z minus 4 plus i. I'm going to do the same thing of changing that into z minus a number. Um, so we've got z minus negative 3 plus 2i and z minus 4, plus, 4 minus i. So this is saying that the distance between z and minus 3 plus 2i is always less than the distance between z and 4 minus i. So it's always closer to minus 3 plus 2i than it is to 4 minus i. So how can we draw that? 
So we've got our two points. Um, if we want to know all of the points where they would be equal to each other, the distance between it would be equal, then we'd be looking for the perpendicular bisector here. We want it to always be closer to the minus 3 plus 2i, so we shade in this side. That's the side that we want to keep. Okay, now getting the equation of that line, we set them equal to each other, and then we solve it. So remember z is just x plus iy, so we um, put those values back in so that we can um, go ahead and solve this. So doing the modulus of those means that we will square the real and the imaginary parts, add them together and square root it. Set them equal to each other on both sides. Now squaring both sides gets rid of that square root part. Expanding our brackets looks like this. And then doing some simplifying we get the following. So we end up with 3y equals 7x minus 2. Um, we can rearrange that into y equals mx plus c and that gives us the y-intercept of being minus 2i over 3. We could also um, set when y equals 0, find out what x would be to find the x-intercept. I'm not going to bother putting it onto this diagram because it's already getting a little crowded, but you can add as much detail as you need for that line.